Welcome back to my Handlebars video training series. My name is Rich Finelli, and in this fifth video in the series, I'll be styling it up by applying the CSS to make the list of Game of Thrones characters look a whole lot better. This has absolutely nothing to do with Handlebars, so if you are really comfortable with CSS or you're just not interested in it at the moment, skip ahead now to the next video on Handlebars if-else statement. But I got tired of looking at the site with no style, and I didn't want any gaps in the code where one video ends and then the next begins with a site that looks totally different. So I figured I'd make this video on CSS. If CSS feels like magic to you, or you just struggle with it, I recommend you check out my video training course on packed publishing called Mastering CSS. You can find it at mastering-css.com. Now let's make this page look better because everything just kind of runs into each other and there's not a clear demarcation of where Jon Snow s stops and Tyrion Lannister starts. Let's do a couple simple things. We'll add a background color to the body tag. So I'll just add this light gray and then let's also take a look at that H1 and add some margin. I'm going to use the two value syntax. So that's a shorthand where the first value is top and bottom margin and I'm putting in 30 pixels and the second value is the left and right I'm putting in zero. So that'll just give me top and bottom margin. Now I want to use text align center and it does exactly what you think it does and we'll give it a color of a, a slightly darker gray and I'll use the hexadecimal code for that. We'll take a look at that. So we've got our, our H1 centered and our background color. Now what we need to do is kind of make each character separated from each other. And we want to kind of center them in the middle of the page. What we have is all of our characters are in this character list container. So let's first center that. So in order to center it, first we'll give it a width. So we want it to take up 75% of our real estate and then we'll use the old centering trick where we use auto for the left and right margin. The top and bottom margin could be anything we want. I'm going to use zero, but the left and right margin, setting that to the keyword auto is going to center it right into the middle of the page provided that we have a width specified, which we do. So let's verify that that works. And you know, it doesn't look like it's centered, but really they are centered. And as soon as we add a, a background color to the each LI, each one of these characters, we'll see that they are centered. So let's do that character. And we'll say background color is just white. And we'll separate each one of those characters. We wanted a clear separation, so we'll add margin bottom. And we'll check that out. So yes, now we can see these character boxes. Really, the whole character container takes up this space, and they are centered. And that looks like about 75% of the whole, entire width of the browser. So that looks good. Next, let's change the text inside of the character div to white. And the way I'm going to target the H2 and then these three P's is I could do this. I could just do H2 comma dot character P. But instead I'm going to use this universal selector. And this is going to be okay every single element inside of dot character. So that's going to apply to the H2 and the P's. And it's even going to apply to the image but image doesn't have text so it's not going to have a color and we'll say that's going to be at 505.961 and while we're at it let's target the image that's inside of the character li and float it left and let's make sure we push the, these h2 and p's off of it a little bit by giving it a margin right of 20 pixels Okay, so we've got our, our text that same gray. We've got our image floated left. We've got our margin right looking good. The margin right after the image looking good. But we got one major problem is now everything's kind of running in together. This is a problem with floats. Say uh, 
classic problem with floats. It doesn't always look like this, but what's happening is the container is not the same height as the image that's floated within it. Because what happens is when you float something, its container may collapse, and that's what's happening. So what we need to do is we need to fix that collapse. And there's several ways to fix it, and my preferred way is using the clear fix method, but you know, for the sake of this, I just want it to look good. There's kind of another way we can do this is we can just actually just add overflow hidden. And don't ask me how that works. It's really meant to hide any overflow outside that, you know, anything that runs outside of that container, preventing it from being hidden. But for whatever reason in CSS world, it fixes the problem of collapsed containers due to floats. So there we have it. Now everything looks a little bit better than it did before. I'm not going to say it looks good though. Uh, but anyway, that is just a little bit of styling it up using some CSS. Um, in the next video, we will look at some more actual handlebar stuff and we'll look at the if else statement.